Hey folks, my guest today is Ellie Schleifer. He is today working on a company called Trunk.io, which helps you land code faster. In a previous life, he was an autonomy staff enge software engineer at Uber. And before that, was a staff technical lead manager at YouTube. Ellie, you ready to take us to the top? Let's do it. All right, man. So so what is Trunk and who are, who's buying this? Who are you selling to? Uh, so Trunk is a dev tools company. We're basically creating a vertical to the left of GitHub. Our goal is to help engineers land code faster. Kind of like the core idea is that being an engineer is not particularly fun. Once you hit like any amount of scale in your organization, uh, landing code gets really hard. It's kind of tedious. I kind of describe it as like death by a thousand paper cuts. You know, every time you're trying to actually do something, you know, you run into some weird little snag. And you know, Trunk is all about like smoothing out all those uh, snags and making the flow simple. Because you know, having been at Google, it's like it's amazing. You have tens of thousands of engineers landing code all day long in a monorepo, and it works. And then you have a company of you know the size of. Uh, Slack or others that you know have you know hundreds of engineers and doing work there is very hard, right? We had 600 engineers at Uber ATG. We had 30 engineers supporting them as dev tools, dev experience space, and landing code was really hard. Like the I ran an organization, uh, the autonomy systems team. Part of our goal was to basically assess why are we not landing code faster? Why are we not you know making greater, faster progress? And the answer on survey after survey was landing code is hard. It wasn't like getting the self-driving algorithms right. It was landing my code through the PR gates was too hard. And that, you know, set off a, you know, flag in you know, my, my head. I feel like we should really go address this problem. So what did Google, I mean, you mentioned, you just spoke nicely of Google. What did Google know that Uber and YouTube, or I guess YouTube is Google, what did they know that you, the others didn't? I think it's an investment thing, right? So building proper dev tools like requires a tremendous amount of investment and time and energy and focus, you know, and even talking to people inside Google that came about over many, many years of, you know, work and focus. Basically, every time something stopped working because it got too big, they would go and pour resources at it. And I think that the right way to do this is like as a company to take on that responsibility to approach this from a product perspective and not just be firefighting, but to be like, okay, if you're going to build this as a product and not just as a tool, not just a set of bash scripts, how would you actually go do this? And that's really where Trunk started at. We're basically saying, what are the core pieces of a, of a repository and a modern organizational repo that everyone should have and everyone keeps building themselves over and over again? How can we do that right so that you don't like miss all these little edge cases because there are so many edge cases in that space. Um, and uh, you know, it's funny, we, as we, we were able to hire a lot of engineers really quickly because as we talked to engineers, like, oh yeah, I see this problem all the time. I've been at three different companies where it was just a total, total mess. Uh, yeah. And uh, I think, you know, we're onto something, something here. So, so if people are listening going, I want to try Ellie's tool right now, I mean, what are customers paying you on average to use the technology? So the product is still like, uh, it's a uh, pre-launch, you know, we're basically like, we're going to hit our MVP fairly soon. Uh, but you can go and try out our private, uh, our private alpha right now. You can go to trunk.io. You can, uh, I'll take you links to our documentation. You can install it and start running it yourselves. Um, and really what you're going to see is that our first product is uh, what we call Trunk Check. It's a, you know, universal linter that runs on every machine uh, and every user's box. And you know, our, from our perspective, every single language, every technology in a modern repository should be checked for static analysis, formatting, linting, uh, uh, the same exact way in every single engineer's box. And we see this as a major problem. Like often, you know, companies will turn on uh, analyzers for a single language, but really they're using 10, 20 different technologies. Uh, you know, they have some of their stuff for cloud formation, they have some stuff for Terraform, they have their core languages, and they have a bunch of supporting Bash scripts and Python scripts. And those things all should be checked because all of them are places where um, universality for security and formatting and, you know, readability and correct, correct you know, uh, approach to software design all should be applied to all those places across the board. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what we do. We basically turn on the tool, you run initialization, we detect all the languages and technologies you use, and we turn on all the right tools for you and you're off to the races. Um, and that's like a huge you know, step function uh, compared to you know, what's out there in the market today. When did you write the first line of code for Trunk? We started development in January. Okay, so. oh, this year. So you've been at it for 10 months, 11 months. Um, yeah. How have you funded yourself to date? Obviously your pre-revenue. Uh, yeah, so we raised, uh, we raised money from Andreessen Horowitz. Um, we closed that round back in January. Okay, um, how much did you raise? We raised... Uh, 3.25, I believe. And, and why? So I'm going to make some assumptions about you personally. So, you know, sure. you know, be pissed off at me if you want, but, or correct me, but I mean, these are like big jobs you had. I assume you had some savings. Why couldn't you just put it all on the line, keep hundred percent equity, 
you know, pay others and, and do that at the beginning? Why'd you want to go down the, the VC route right away? I think that with VC, you have great support for a partnership, right? You have the ability to reach out to other companies that will be like your first customers. They are going to make the, uh, you know, and help you also scale the business really quickly, right? This is not a business that's going to be uh, funded uh, and kind of bootstrapped, you know, really small. Because as I described, the problem we're going after is big, right? Uh, as soon as we get the right seed working, it's going to be about like building a whole suite of uh, services and solutions to really make the, bring kind of that, Google quality dev experience, dev tools to everybody. And to build that is not going to be a five engineer project, right? It's not, you know, five engineers and done. This is a large, large scale project and it's going to require real capital to build it correctly. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I totally understand the need for capital, but you can get capital from investors or you can get them from pre-selling customer contracts, right? So you've chosen to get capital from the, the, the sort of VC world. I'm just, I guess, w w why couldn't you pre-sell customers on this idea so that you can get some of their money to build this, this with, this with upfront? I mean, if you're going to say, what are the different approaches? It's a lot easier to go raise money from VC than it is to go and pre-sell customers on a product. That's like, you know, a straight up uh, answer on that one. Well, you would argue that. I think there's a lot of people listening who do not have experience at Google and Uber and YouTube who would say it's much more difficult to raise than it is to pre-sell customers. So we'll chalk that up to a unique advantage that you have. Fair enough. Obviously, you know, there's, there's privilege from being a second time, a second time around. Oh, is this your second uh, business as well? Yes. Oh, what was your yeah. first company? My first company was called Director. We started that um, back in uh, 2011. Uh, I was in the mobile video space um, and ran that for three years and then sold that to YouTube. Oh, super cool. Super cool. Oh, sort of film space, huh? Did you bootstrap that one or raise there too? That one we raised as well. Yeah. Yep. 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 Cool. From, from, from same folks at Andreessen or no? No, no. That was a, East, that was a Boston firm uh, we come from Nextview. Okay. Very cool. All right. So, so where does 3.2 million get you to, you think? I think that's going to get us like to our first, you know, two, three products out the door, right? So we're going mm -hmm. to have this check tool. We have a couple other products we'll be announcing um, in Q1 and it'll give us the real, like, you know, the beginnings of something really cool. These tools like are really synergistic and they start to work together as we kind of, our roadmap is quite long. Uh, what I love is that we're actually like, if you look at our original pitch deck and where we actually are today, we're actually hitting all of our timeline numbers, which is crazy, right? Because in software, everything should be slower than it what is. What are but... some of those numbers, Ellie? <clears throat> You know, 10 months to this first product, right? And that is like basically where we're, we're sitting at. Our hiring plan has also like been, you know, consistent. Hiring inside this environment is really, really difficult, right? <laughs> yeah, any engineers how many, how many folks today? We're 11 right now. We'll be okay. 13 in January. I imagine heavy engineering, most, almost probably all of them engineers. Everyone is an engineer, right? Now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's so fun to work on a dev product as an engineer. Like, you know, you're your own customer and you're, uh, and you're building it. So that, it's, it's kind of the most fun uh, gig I've had. Uh, so you had in that slide deck where you raised 3.2, you had a goal sort of, of get the first product out, hire a certain number of quality of people. Any other metrics you put in that deck that you're you know beating? Yeah, I also, I mean, also just like you know, get uh, initial customers on board, right? That's part of this thing. It's like we're we know we're we're hitting the right thing when certain companies come along and are interested. And we have uh, just started that process over the last maybe two months where we thought the product is good enough to move forward and actually put this in other engineers' hands, right? We've been using it for six months. But the truth is, like, as a dev tool, like, it's got to work. It cannot fail even once because uh, your customers are going to be really upset uh, if they can't land code, right? So we want to be the thing that's always making things better and not getting in your way. So, you know, we a real focus on quality, making sure that thing just works. I'm going to ask the engineer to put on his sales hat for a second, which you've done before, but how are you building that wait list? Um, we are reaching out to the community, right? We're finding uh, engineers, uh, traditional means of just like, you know, talking about what we're doing to our friends and, you know, colleagues, but also going on to Discord channels, Slack community groups, being like, hey, is anyone running into these problems, right? These problems are not things we're making up, both, you know, whole cloth. These are pre existing issues that um, have had just poor solutions. So, um, you know, some of the stuff is inbound, we're just like lucky people come across it, but otherwise, you know, we're reaching out to the community to be like, Hey, look at this situation. We can turn this thing on and make your world a little better. You know, you want to give it a try and we'll go from there. Ellie, what's the, uh, can you name a discord channel that you think you're going to get a lot of customers from over time? Uh, you know, I don't have good track of it right now on my, uh, I, I, it's kind of one of these things. I don't keep track of the names. It's more about the technology spaces, right? We're looking a lot. We have a tremendous value in the C++ community right now because some of the stuff we do uh, running certain uh, analyzers like Clang Tidy is basically impossible to set up uh, on your own uh, without a tremendous investment of effort and time. And we just basically do it straight out of the box. So mm -hmm. those are some of the cool communities. And that really leads us a lot to robotics companies. Uh, anyone that's doing machine learning or robotics is, has a lot of work going on in C++. 
Uh, and uh, we are you know, talking to a lot of those companies early on. Mm-hmm. Were you able to do something non-standard in terms of valuation on the 3.2 you raised? You know, most people are selling 20% in a pre-seed round like this pre-revenue, but you have an interesting track record. Were you able to basically raise that at less dilute, in a less dilutive uh, round? I don't think we talked to those numbers specifically, but I think we did very well. Can you say sub 20% dilution or no? Uh, I w- wouldn't talk to those numbers, but I would say we did great. <laughs> what do you define as great? Maybe not your own, but if someone else told you, hey, we did this, what would you define as great? Um, yeah, I'd say like you know, the target where you're looking for. Uh, I think you know, we are we're four founder, co-founders that put the thing together. There's four we're of you? The four Holy of mackerel. Okay, wow. Yeah. You guys just say, you know what? We don't, we don't want to debate this. We're just going to do 25 each and move on. That's yeah, that's how we did it. We're an equal team of a uh, group because I think you know what we're going to build is so large, so interesting that I'd rather do it, you know, as a team all together. That's really like how we operate our engineering focus as well. Mm-hmm. Did you have co-founders at your first company? I did, yes. Yeah, yeah. Four? No, that was just one. Okay. And it was all smooth the whole way, or did you or he get less or she get less engaged and in- no, like we, I mean, I, it's a startup, right? It's hard. <laughs> so there are like, there are bumps in the road with any startup, right? It's like the best and worst job you could ever have, I would say. Uh, but I'm so glad to be doing it again. And yeah, I think that, you know, with anything, uh, you know, there was a good friend of mine from high school. We started the company together. We ran it together. We ran it inside YouTube after we sold it. So, um, you know, long history together. All right. Last question, sir, before we wrap up with the famous five, obviously you have to figure out and you got to throw up some kind of pricing paywall to get your first customers. How do you think about what price point to go to market with? Uh, really looking at you know, what, uh, what our competitors looking at in, in a similar space, right? I'd say we don't have any direct competitors, but there are definitely price points of like, what is a dev going to cost per seat uh, for the service? What do we think we're offering? And when do we actually like start to charge money for the service as well, right? I think that um, you know, GitHub and other companies before us have led pretty good models of like show that the value is really there before you're trying to extract money from customers. Um, I think that there is, uh, so in a lot of cases, we'll be offering, you know, companies, you know, very, very generous, you know, trial periods, just make sure that they're getting the value out of it. And I think the stats and the SaaS offering and the web that will kind of show you how things are getting better and better in your repositories uh, will just, you know, lead companies down the road to them be willing to pay, right? Engineers are insanely expensive, right? Uh, they're only getting more expensive. And if you can return even like two hours of productivity per engineer per month, you've you know paid your uh, paid your way easily. All right, Elliot, on that note, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite book? Um, well, right now I'm thinking about Dune because I just uh, watched through the movie. I thought it was beautiful. So I'll go with that one, but I have no particular favorite, favorite book. Number two, is there a CEO or founder you're following or studying? Um. I, you know, I probably follow the work of like Elon all the time. I'm just like fascinated by someone who can hit multiple industries and really like conquer them and really think about those things. I, you know, I can't say for him as a person or whatever, but I like from changing the world. Amazing. Number three, what's your favorite besides your own? What's your favorite online tool for building trunk? Linear. Linear? Yeah. Very cool. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, five and a half. Five and a half. Okay. And situation, married, single kids? I'm married. I have three kids. Three, holy mackerel. You're very busy then. All right. And how old are you? I am 42. 42. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. Um, all, the, uh, all the things you're going to build, a lot of them are just going to get thrown away. And that's okay. Guys, it's okay to throw stuff away. He's building trunk.io to solve his own pain point. He experienced at Uber. He experienced at Google. He experienced at his first startup director. Uh, now building us 3.2 million raised earlier this year. Now with Team 11, hoping to go to market here in the next call at two to four months with a technology, again, called Trunk. I'm not an engineer, so I'm not going to act like I know exactly what it is. But what I would tell you is it sounds like it makes engineering teams significantly more effective. Check it out at trunk.io. Ellie, thanks for taking us to the top. Yeah, thanks for uh, talking to me today. I had a great time. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers. They try and do a deal live, and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, 
ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.